Now it's time to discuss the second exploration, how dry am I? This section discusses the detailed water needs. Let's read to learn more. You know that plants need water to survive. Some plants need water more often than others. The amount of light and how moist or dry indoor air is also determine how much water is needed. What does this section tell us? It tells us that the solution might not be as simple as it is. Let's recall, the problem was that the school will lock for two weeks, right? We thought of an irrigation system. We had actually determined two possible solutions. But now arises a new problem, which is how much water would the type of plant in the indoor classroom garden need? So here we need to investigate, to explore more, and determine the types of plant first. This is one. Second part is to know exactly how much this specific type or how much each plant type needs water. Let's see. Water me, more or less. Compare the water needs of these plants in the indoor garden under different weather conditions. Let's Fig see the tree, first. sunny the and dry. Tree. Weekly, cloudy and damp every two weeks. So, when the weather is sunny and dry, it needs to be watered weekly. Fine, if the weather is cloudy, then it only needs water every two weeks. Let's see the different plants present in the garden. What about this one? What, do you know what is it called? Jade plant, sunny Jade. and dry, every week. Cloudy and damp, every one to two weeks. Okay, so it doesn't actually require much water on a weekly basis. What about this one? Pathos, Pathos, sunny and dry, daily, cloudy and damp, weekly. Uh-huh, so we need to consider this. If the weather is sunny and dry, it needs to be watered every day. But if the weather is cloudy and damp, it only needs water every week. Let's see. Gerbera, Gerbera. sunny and dry. Daily, cloudy and damp, every other day. So now we have two types of plants that need water daily. Snake plant, sunny and dry, few times a week. Cloudy and damp, every one to two weeks. Okay, fair enough. What about this Christmas one? cactus, sunny and dry, every other day. Cloudy and damp, every two weeks. Now we move to the Aloe. One. Sunny and dry, every one to three weeks. Cloudy and damp, every one to two months. Have you noticed what I noticed myself? That this is the first plant that needs less water when the weather is sunny and dry. Okay, now we're left with the last one. Boston fern, sunny and dry, few times a week. Cloudy and damp, every one to two weeks. Now that we've studied the different um, detailed water needs of every planet, let's move on to the details, details. You now know about some irrigation systems. Yes, we discussed this. We spoke about the sprinkler, the water globe, um, and the general water needs of certain plants but you still need to know how many times you need to water each plant over the break. Let's try to figure out this section ourselves. Who's thirsty? Here's the data about plants watering needs to complete the chart. So which data are we going to use? We're gonna use what we've learned from this part, the information given here in this section. So let's try to type it together. So if we talk about the aloe plant, do you recall how many times it needs to be watered? They said once every one, two, one to three weeks, right? This is the aloe. Aloe, sunny and dry, every one to three weeks. Cloudy and damp, every one to two months. So the question here is, 
the number of water wings per two weeks for sunny and dry. So how many times do you think it needs water over the two weeks break? Yes, it's only one time, you're right. What about the Boston fern? Eight. Christmas cactus, seven. The fig tree, only twice. Why? Because it needs to be watered weekly, so once a week. The gerbera, 14. Why? Because it needs to be watered on a daily basis. The jade plant, only once a week. The pathos, 14, just like the gerbera, if you still remember. And finally, the snake plant, only seven times because every other day it needs to be watered. So if we look at this table, and it's up to you to choose the kind of plants that you would keep in your garden so that the plant stays in good health during the two weeks break. Which one would you choose? Yeah, you're right, the aloe and the jade plant. Why? Because these are the plants that need less water, okay? So how can learning more details about needs help you think about solutions to a problem? What do you think? Well, I think, or I believe myself, that it only let us figure out or realize that a solution is not as easy as it might seem to come up with, okay? Now we move to the third section, which is testing, testing, test it. Now that you've learned about the water needs of the plants, what details needed to be considered in your solution and designed an irrigation model, it's time to describe how you will test your model. Okay, that's an important part. So we define the problem. We researched about the information that may help us find the solution. We had different possible solutions. And now it's time to test the best solution. How will you know that your irrigation solution works? If you don't remember, look back at your list of criteria. So, what do you think? How will we know that it will, it will work? First of all, we need to always keep in mind that for a solution to be successful or to be really a good and perfect solution, it must meet our criteria and not fail our constraints. Let's recall together the criteria and constraints we have by reading this question. Recall that most solutions to a problem are not perfect. Limitations of any solution often arise during testing. On the lines below, write a step-by-step -step plan to explain how you can test your solution with one plan. Use the guide questions and writing guide to help you. We're gonna actually use all the information we collected in the recorded video. The guide question. Describe your test. What are the constraints and criteria? What would you observe or measure to show that your irrigation solution works? So, my solution summary. What would be the solution summary? How would we know that the solution is really perfect and it's meeting all the needs that we have. Hmm. Can you come up with the answer? Yes, I think so. So my solution summary is that I need to find the correct or the perfect irrigation system that would help me keep the plants healthy during the two week break. This is one without losing much water and without giving the plant neither more water than it needs nor less water than it needs. Now, what are the constraints? Can you remember? The constraints were that, as I just mentioned, it should work for two weeks 
and it is safe for the classroom. Now, what about the criteria? The irrigation system or the solution should provide water and should be easy to control the flow. Now, the question is, what types of evidence would support whether or not your system passed its test? How would we know if the solution is really beneficial, that it has really worked out? First of all, by trying it, using specific kind of plant, and we said that maybe the jade and the aloe plants are the best for this type of problems. And then we also said that, or we actually know that, an irrigation system would prove to be correct when it helps the plant grow, right? So maybe I can measure the length of the plant before the break or after the break. I could also look at the general outlook of the plant, the leaves, whether they are still green or not, whether it looks healthy as usual or not. So these are the types of evidences I can collect to support whether the irrigation system I chose over the specific selected plant is perfect or the perfect solution for this problem or not. That's it for today. We've covered in this lesson how a solution to a problem must pass through different procedures. And let's recall together the different um, engineering design processes. We spoke about defining the problem, researching about the problem, planning possible solutions, deciding on a specific solution. And then now, but actually today, we spoke about how we can test whether our solution is the perfect one or not. In the coming lesson, we would know more about the other engineering process designs involved. That's it for today. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.